somebody in an alarm. I forgot you guys have a totally different system. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're starting out good. Yeah. Um, wow, this is like the most unfamiliar uh, system like we have. But I, I, the, most, the, the system I'm the most unfamiliar with. Anyway, I'll uh, do what I can here. Uh, so, kind of domestic booster system here is basically uh, supplying the water, uh, city water pressure up to a number of floors. So, the uh, reason for this is obviously the uh, city water pressure that's coming in isn't sufficient to provide the pressure needed up at the upper floors. Mm -hmm. as, uh, as, uh, as the water goes up, it's going to lose pressure uh, one pound for every 2.3 feet. So basically, this guy is trying to maintain a set point of 70. Uh, you have your in-print water contained about, uh, uh, suction is about 55. It kind of fluctuates a little bit between 55 and 60. You got the, uh, the uh, suction system is our discharge pressure. So these two pressures here, as I mentioned, so the target 70, sorry, I think I said 79. That's what our pressure is currently. Um, our target is 75. So this guy is always trying to maintain 75. PSI at the uh, the discharge header. Now, these pressures here are reflective of what the transducer right here is seeing in pressure. So that pressure is actually what's uh, read at the header on each of them. Uh, these are set up in such a way that uh, the set point 75, the uh, start, uh, start pressure set point is 70. Uh, so anytime the pressure uh, somebody flushes toilets, uh, uses water in the sinks upstairs or anything like that. Uh, when that pressure uh, drop below, drops down to 70, it's going to hit the first pump on. And the first pump is going to run and it's going to try to maintain that pressure. The first pump can't keep up. If it sees that the pressure keeps on dropping, even though the first pump is running, it's going to kick the second pump on and it's going to chase them together uh, in order to satisfy that pressure. Both pumps will run. For a minimum of three minutes uh, after the pressure has been satisfied, uh, it's going to go ahead and stage them both off. And then the next time uh, pressure drops, the alternating pump will kick on. So uh, hypothetically, the first pump, pump one will kick on. Uh, if it can't maintain, it's going to kick pump two on. They're both going to run until satisfied the pressure shuts down. Next time, pump two is going to start. That way, they're always alternating, trying to get equal run time. Uh, you have VFD speed. These are the VFDs on here, variable, variable frequency drive. So it's mm -hmm. going to, uh, that's how you're getting a better efficiency. It's only going to run as much as it needs to to maintain the pressure. And then it's going to go ahead and stage down. Uh, water temperature, uh, 55 degrees. That's on your suction header here. That's important because uh, as the uh, pumps run, if something were to happen to the system, and it's not shutting the pump off. If the pump just keeps on running, running, running all the time, uh, and that friction that the pump is uh, producing is going to start heating the water, causing the temperature of the water to rise, because uh, it's just running, running, running. As this temperature gets to, if it gets up to 100, it knows that there's an issue, and it's going to go ahead and shut the pump off. You're going to get an alarm instead of saying system normal here. This is going to be uh, saying high water temperature uh, has been reached, so that's going to be red. You're also going to get a, uh, I believe this one has the audible alarm inside. Will um, that email us, or how will we know when it alarms? That's a good question. I'm not sure if you guys are tied in uh, for that function. Let me see. Um, you guys know, is it okay if I shut this off for a second and take a look inside here of what you guys are tied into? What's going on on the roof? Uh, which is basically draining the line out there, so it should yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, because it depends if you guys are actually tied into it or not. Okay. Uh, let me see. I think you're, let me take a look at what's inside here anyway. Because it would be nice that if it does alarm to give us a notification. Yeah. Uh, so if you guys want to do alarm notifications, you're going to actually be tied into 5 and 6, which is our general fault relay. Mm -hmm. And you guys are currently not. So, you guys so there's no to, data. If you can see those yellow terminals, you mm -hmm. guys have to be running a wire to there. That's going to provide basically, when this guy goes into alarm, your control relay right here mm -hmm. is going to close. It'll close those contacts and that way you would go. Currently, oh, okay. you're not going to get any alarm because you're not tied into there. Oh. Yes. So basically, while I got this open, I'm going to show you this is your main power coming in. This is the uh, power disconnects for both pumps. 
Uh, and then you have uh, your control relay here, obviously your PLC, programmable logic mm -hmm. controller. Uh, you have your uh, DC uh, supply voltage, supplying voltage to the, uh, to the transducers. And then uh, you also have the two transducers uh, suction and discharge, and then you have your temperature sensor, which I mentioned earlier, okay. uh, it's tied in right here. You have an enable right here. If you guys wanted to enable or disable it remotely, or okay. usually people that aren't uh, using that function. So yeah. it probably would need to have a communication. Yes, so, so JCI, uh -huh. the, so the alarm and uh -huh. the pump status are gonna come into the BMS. Okay. That has not been brought in yet. Okay, that's what I just want to make sure. Okay. But it's it's just a general alarm. Uh-huh. And uh, a pump on off status. That would be great, pump. yes. Yeah. Yes. And then as you see when I shut the power off, as soon as you turn the power back on, everything goes back to normal. Mm -hmm. Then I have to worry about messing with any settings, it's automatically gonna go off that target set point of 75. Okay. Um this shows what the speed of the VFD is. Obviously they go up to 60 hertz. I believe I uh, programmed these so that they wouldn't run that much pressure. I think I said these ones are like a maximum of 55 or so because I don't want to be over pressurized on the lines over 80 PSI, uh, mm -hmm. 80, 82. Uh, so then you can probably start causing uh, leaks at uh, systems. And worst case, you end up blowing pipes. Okay. So we definitely don't want that. Uh, any questions so far? Actually, no flow testing. What that means right now is that the pump is running, it sees that this pressure, the system discharge pressure is not dropping, mm -hmm. and so it actually starts up a 30 second timer where it's, uh, so uh, basically what happened there, the reason why you saw no flow is somebody created demand and then the demand went away very quickly. Okay. Like you say within 10 seconds or whatever, 20 seconds, you know, somebody opens the faucet and then closes it. The pump sees that the uh, that the pressure is not dropping. As long as the pressure is not dropping below the set point, uh, it starts the timer for 30 seconds, and then uh, if it sees that the pressure still hasn't dropped, it starts an additional timer 30 seconds. So after uh, 60 seconds has elapsed, you get a no flow shutdown. That's to keep uh, try to keep a pump from running and running and running all the time unnecessarily. As I mentioned, if that scenario happened, if that for, for whatever reason, if that failed, that's where the temperature sensor comes into play and it's going to be a safety to shut the pump off because so it knows that something is wrong and it's, uh, it's like, hey, the, you know, the water's not, the pump's running, but the water's not going anywhere. Shut this guy off. That's where you're going to get that alarm. Okay. Uh, and then, so, as I mentioned, you have your uh, suction pressure coming in from the line, uh, or from the uh, city, rather. Uh, your pump, water's going this way and then coming out this way. This is a uh, vertical, it's known as a vertical multi-stage pump. So you actually have your motor shaft, your motor shaft here, pump shaft here, and then there's a series of uh, impellers. I believe these have eight impellers uh, stacked up. So it's actually bringing the water in. It's uh, as each impeller, impeller is uh, spinning, the water is actually like going, going up this way and then it's up, going out to the discharge. That's just what's going on inside the actual casing here. You have your uh, pump shaft, your motor shaft, that's connected by the coupler there. I'm not going to touch it because it could turn on any minute. Yeah, it like is. Right yeah, you uh, don't want your finger like, there. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, and what's important with that, the reason why I opened that up there is uh, actually, I said, look in here. Uh, there's a little blue uh, plastic uh, tool inside here. Mm -hmm. If you guys ever see water leaking out, you guys get a call that, hey, the pump's uh, leaking. Can you go check it out? If you see, obviously the um, stainless steel uh, mm -hmm. cover is going to be on there. If you see water leaking out from here, uh, that's an indication that either the seal has failed or the, uh, the yeah, impeller so stack has dropped down. Mm -hmm. um, this guy has, these pumps have uh, a cartridge seal where basically the cap right here, this little cap right there, has a stationary, what's it known as a stationary portion of the seal uh, sitting up under the underneath the uh, underside of this guy. Mm -hmm. And then you have the uh, rotating portion, which actually has a spring uh, that's, uh, that's actually putting, the spring is causing, is putting pressure against the stationary portion, and that's where you're gonna get the seal. Okay. Uh, but in the event that, say okay. like, okay. if over time, it doesn't usually happen over time, but if uh, if this guy loosened up, or you know, vibration or whatever, mm -hmm. if it ever loosened and it caused that uh, the impeller stock stack to drop down in the mm -hmm. pipe, it would actually open up. The spring is no longer going to be applying the proper pressure. It would actually open up uh, the between the bases, and that's where you get leakage from. Okay. 
if that's not the case, and so the reason why I mentioned that little tool in here, uh, let me go ahead and pull this guy actually. This guy right here. Need, so basically, uh, yeah, let me pull this guy up. I'm not going to turn on yet just because I don't want to try to uh, take my hand off. This guy has to fit under here. If it will not fit under there like that, mm -hmm. that means the impeller stack has dropped and that's what would be your issue. So uh, in that okay. case, you would just uh, take an Allen key, uh, loosen up these screws. Uh, there's uh, two on this side, two on this side. Loosen those up, stick a screwdriver under there to pry that guy up. Stick the, uh, the spacer under there just like that, then tighten it back up. And then if it still continues to leak, then you know you have a seal failure. Uh, oh, seals cool. can fail because they get debris in there, sand, dirt, any kind of grit, construction uh, crack, you know, whatever mm -hmm. can cause it to leak. Um, or uh, if the pump ever runs dry, uh, then it can cause that uh, seal face to leak. Uh, so that's the, if you, if you just if you ever get a, um, a leak uh, from it, that's the proper way to go about checking that. Um, other than that, uh, so you have your uh, suction valve, your discharge valve over there, uh, you've got a uh, check valve right, uh, right here. This guy's a check valve, so basically that's just keeping the pressure uh, so the pump is running. That's keeping it against the, uh, the discharge header. And then also, more importantly, that's keeping the pump. So this guy's running, that one's hot. That's keeping the, the check valves are keeping the pressure this guy is taking from uh, entering into this guy right here. Okay. Yeah, because otherwise that can damage the pump and it's, I mean, it's a waste anyway because you're taking this hard water and sending it back to the suction header, which you never want. So that's what that guy's for there. Obviously you have the isolation valve for each. These guys right here, this is a uh, temperature pressure release valve. If the pressure in the casing ever goes above 125 psi, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to discharge out of that, uh, and it's going to send that to a drain to this guy right here. Uh, so I believe it's 125 psi, and it's also uh, 100 and uh, I believe those are rated at 125 uh, degree water also. So if either of those situations occur, I mean, they're over pressure or over temperature, and it's going to uh, discharge out of there to protect the pump. Uh, these motors, uh, the only, so uh, on these pumps, the only thing that's serviceable on them, or the only maintenance, I should say, is greasing the bearing. Okay. Um, it has a, uh, a zerk fitting right here, and there's also another one right here. Um, and then on the motor nameplate, it's a Valdor motor, the nameplate's on the back side over here. Uh, if you always ask me, uh, the obvious question is how often are you supposed to grease them? Uh -huh. You'd want to, to get that answer, you'd want to, because each motor is different, you want to look up on the Valdor uh, website and uh, actually look up the uh, model number, and it'll tell you based upon run hours how often to grease it. On these guys, let me see, it should say on here. Okay, yeah, I'll show you on the on uh, front over service, here so. uh, where to get that information. So okay. that's the only maintenance on these uh, pumps is just to grease the bearings according to the runtime. Okay. And if you uh, come right here, I can show you how to find that information. Um, basically, this is your home screen. You just say, so you see pump one, pump two. Press on this guy, you see run hours. Mm -hmm. So it's only been running for 11.6 hours. Pump two has been running for 11.26 hours. So if you ever want to know, like, okay, do the pump does the pump need to be greased? You just take a look at the uh, look up that nameplate on Valdor's website. Mm -hmm. uh, see how many hours say if it needs to uh, be greased every 350 hours or whatever, and it'll say how often, how much grease to add. And you basically go off of that. Okay. That's important because a lot of people just come up to it. They're like, oh yeah, just add grease to it, but they end up over greasing the motor, and then it actually uh, yeah, ends up they done the stuff. Yeah, yeah. we don't want that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely don't want that. So that's what that's about. Handoff auto um, on on these pumps. So the normal setting is auto. That's going to be uh, allowing the system to run off of the uh, programmable logic controller. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the case that if anything ever happened and you can't get the pump to run, you get a call for no pressure uh, in the building or really low pressure in the building. And you come to this guy and you see that neither of the pumps are running and you got an alarm that says uh, you know low low discharge pressure or whatever. But for whatever reason the pump won't run. 
If you uh, if you run put this guy into hand, it'll force the pump to run. It basically kind of bypasses the PLC logic and it just forces to, the pump to run at a uh, at a speed that I set for 80 percent, which basically is uh, 48 hertz. So it's 80 percent to 60 uh, 60 hertz. That's just if you guys ever get a. Uh, but the important thing to remember is hand will always run all the time. It's never going to shut off. Uh, so that's only if you get like a low pressure situation or something where something's wrong with your PLC and you just need to get pressure to the building, you can always run it into hand. You can do it for either pump. But the normal uh, auto. operating mode should always be an auto. Okay. So pretty simple on that. Um, I believe you can see on here. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, I guess on these ones you can't really see a. Uh, actually. Okay, yeah, this is just a, um, uh, how to, to take a look at the alarm log. Uh, high discharge, low discharge, a lot of these from, were from when I did the startup. Mm -hmm. But I'm just showing you how to go through that, basically. Okay. Then you press the right arrow right here, it will show you uh, the whole list of it. It keeps a uh, list of any alarm that it's ever had, really. Um, it's up to you guys. If you guys wanted to clear that, you can always do refresh and it would clear those. But it's a good idea just to keep it on there. That's important because if you guys are getting... If you want to go through history. Yep, exactly. Yep. Yeah. You never want to delete that history. Never want to delete that history. Yes. It's so important for troubleshooting. Yeah. Absolutely. So. I mean, um, you wish it has a backup. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? It would, it would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so, another thing I forgot to mention, this guy right here is a uh, hydro pneumatic tank. All it is is simply uh, just has a rubber bladder inside. Uh -huh. Water goes into the inside of the bladder, air is on the outside of the bladder in between. I can swear, I was like, that's a humongous osmosis. <laughs> <laughs> right? so, that's how it looks like. <laughs> this, this guy, it looks like what? Osmosis tank. Osmosis tank. <laughs> yeah. Osmosis tank. Yeah. 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 This one's much different though, I promise. <laughs> So basically this guy, you follow this line, is connected to your discharge pressure right here. Uh -huh. This is important because it's basically saving the life of these pumps. Um, without that tank, anytime you guys get a small demand, the pump's going to turn on. And if you're going to get your pump turning on and turning off way too often, it ends up uh -huh. burning out the BFDs. This guy right here keeps, uh, so as I mentioned, there's air on the outside of uh, the rubber tank. Uh, water is actually inside the rubber bladder. Uh -huh. And basically that air is keeping pressure against, I have these guys set that up uh, to our uh, target 75, I have them set that to 70, uh, 70 pounds. So we always set it to about five PSI below the target. Uh -huh. And so uh, because that air is compressing against the tank, it's basically going to, anytime you get a small demand, this guy is gonna supply that water until it'll continue to, until the demand gets to be too much and that pressure drops down to 70 or so. Uh, so if you guys ever have an issue where the pump is running and running and running all the time, uh, it, or it's running too often really, rather I should say, if the pump's, it, you see that the pump's constantly kicking on, kicking off, kicking on, kicking off, mm -hmm. that's most likely because this guy has lost air. Uh, there's a little Schrader valve right here, just like you have on a car tire, and basically uh, this guy had the, as I mentioned, I had these guys uh, adjust this to 70, and uh, if this ever lost pressure, 78. 78? Uh, yeah, it wasn't supposed to be. Because we are... Uh, 78. Our target 75. Yeah, that should have been actually like 72-ish or so. Okay. Then I'll, I'll drop it down. You need to okay. lower it. Yeah, lower it to 70. <laughs> 70, 70, 70, 70, 70. Like 70, 72, they say like within like uh, like 2 to 5 PSI. So you can, like 70 would be the lowest you want to do on there. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Look at that up here. <laughs> remember when you do that? Remember oh, you mean you go down you seven? Guy, open up this guy and drain it, drain it down, and then once it's all dry, then you set the air pressure, and then you uh, and then you basically reintroduce water slowly into it because whenever you're actually filling a rubber uh, bladder, if you open this guy up too quickly, it can end up rupturing the bladder. We definitely don't want that. So, yeah. So it's just. Uh, the main thing to remember about the air tank is that it's supplying, keeping that pressure, that air pressure in there, it's keeping the pressure in the line. Mm -hmm. It's uh, basically saving the life of these PFPs uh, so that it's not constantly running the pump on and off all the time. We have had situations where they feel 
burn their VFDs out. These guys are pretty expensive, and uh, it's a very simple uh, matter just to make sure that this guy is uh, staying charged. And uh, you can kind of tell too. It sounds, but it sounds hollow like that. That that's good. If it sounds like a like a uh, solid like a uh, you know like a solid like mm -hmm. knocking noise. That means this guy has lost its air charge, and that's where it's basically like as if he didn't have an air thing. Okay. So, yeah. So that's the important thing with it. So. Um, and if it is solid, that either means that it lost air through the uh, Schrader valve or the bladder has ruptured. And, uh, and yeah, obviously a ruptured bladder, and you have to have to uh, replace the bladder on it, or worst case scenario. I think this guy actually it is serviceable. It has little plans on the bottom. It's a pain in the butt, but you can replace the bladder on it. But yeah, that should not be an issue with uh, this for your. So you're telling me if this goes down, you have to replace the whole tank. <laughs> Well, Do you ask it what? Replace the whole tank. Um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people kind of just take it out. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm not sure what the price difference is. I'm sure obviously it's a lot cheaper to replace the butter, but then you got the man hours to do it too. True. <laughs> but yes, absolutely. That's the easiest way to go about it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Any questions on any of this stuff so far? Nope. Okay. I think, uh, so yeah, I already talked about like how to read the status on there, how to read the um, alarm, what the different readings are, the VFD speed and all that. Um, and then the VFDs themselves, if they ever go into alarm, uh, it'll usually it'll throw an error on here also, but then in order to determine what the alarm is going to be on this guy, um, it, would, uh, it would basically throw its own error code on here, and, uh, and then you just look up uh, WEG, uh, CFW 600 on uh, on Google and you can find a manual and it'll basically tell you what the alarm is and what that's referring to. Uh, most alarms can be easily cleared just by cycling the power here mm -hmm. um, or on the individual yeah. disconnect to the VFDs. Um, but basically uh, you're not working on these things day in and day out like I am, mm -hmm. uh, so you're not going to know what the heck the code is. So you can just look it up simply on Google, and then I'll kind of tell you uh, how to go about uh, fixing that code whenever it is. Okay. So I, or it should get an error on there. Um, other than that, uh, I pretty much covered everything on these. I mean, there's not really a whole lot to them. Pretty simple. Um, do you have any questions on any of this stuff? No. Nope. Cool. Right on. Any questions from anyone else? Very well done, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome.